Welcome back to the course Fundamentals of Operating Systems based on the textbook Operating System Concepts 10th edition by Silbershots, Gagney, and Galvin published by Wiley Publishing. In a moment we're going to begin a discussion of page allocation but let's pick up where we left off. Other procedures are often used in addition to specific page replacement algorithms. For example, systems commonly keep a pool of free frames. When a page fault occurs, a victim frame is chosen as before. However, the desired page is read into a free frame from the pool before the victim is written out. This procedure allows the process to restart as soon as possible without waiting for the victim page to be written out. When the victim is later written out, its frame is added to that free frame pool. An expansion of this idea is to maintain a list of modified pages. Whenever the paging device is idle, a modified page is selected and written to secondary storage. Its modified bit is then reset. Now this scheme increases the probability that a page will be clean, so to speak, when it is selected for replacement and will not need to be written out. Another modification is to keep a pool of free frames but to remember which page was in each frame. Since the frame contents are not modified when a page is written to secondary storage, the old page can be reused directly from the free frame pool if it's needed before the frame is reused. No input output is needed in this case. When a page fault occurs, we first check whether the desired page is in the free frame pool. If it is not, we must select a free frame and read into it. So you see, this is similar to a caching routine, since we did not remove the contents of a frame, but just placed it in the free frame pool. If it happens that that frame is called again, then it might still be available in the free frame pool, therefore bypassing the need to reload it from memory. Some versions of Unix system use this method in conjunction with the second chance algorithm. It can be a useful augmentation to any page replacement algorithm to reduce the penalty incurred if the wrong victim page is selected. Now, how do we allocate the fixed amount of free memory among the various processes? If we have, for example, 93 frames and two processes, how many frames does each process get? Consider a simple case of a system with 200 frames. The operating system may take 50, leaving 150 frames for the user processes. Under pure demand paging, all 150 frames would initially be put on the free frame list. When a user process starts executing, it will generate a sequence of page faults. The first 150 page faults in this case would all get free frames from the free frame list. When the free frame list is exhausted, a page replacement algorithm could be used to select one of the 150 pages to be replaced with the 151st and so on. When the process terminates, the frames it was using would be once again placed on the free frame list. There are many variations on this simple strategy. We can require that the operating system allocate its full buffer and table space from the free frame list. When this space is not in use by the operating system, it can be used to support user paging. Or we can try to keep some number of free frames reserved on the free frame list at all times, so that when a page fault occurs, there's a free frame available to page into. While the page swap is taking place, a replacement can be selected, which is then written to the storage device as the user process continues to execute. Other variants is also possible, but the basic strategy is clear. The user process has allocated any free frames. 
Our strategies for the allocation of frames are constrained in various ways. For example, we only allocate more than the total number of available frames if there is page sharing. We must also allocate at least a minimum number of frames. Now here we look more closely at the latter requirement. One reason for allocating at least a minimum number of frames involves performance. Obviously, as the number of frames allocated to each process decreases, the page fault rate increases, slowing process execution. Also remember that when a page fault occurs before executing instructions is complete, the instruction must be restarted. This situation suggests that we must have enough frames to hold all the different pages that any instruction can reference. For example, consider a machine in which all memory reference instructions may reference only one memory address. In this case, we would need at least one frame for the instruction and one frame for the memory reference. In addition, if one level indirect addressing is allowed, for example, a load instruction on frame 16 can then refer to an address on frame 0, which is an indirect reference to frame 23, then paging requires at least three frames per process. The minimum number of frames is defined by the computer architecture. For example, if the move instruction for a given architecture includes more than one word for some addressing modes, the instruction itself may straddle two frames. Also, if each of its two operands may be indirect references, a total of six frames are required. Here's another example. The move instruction for Intel 32 and 64-bit architectures allow data to move only from register to register and between registers and memory. It does not allow direct memory to memory movement, which limits the required minimum number of frames for a process. Whereas the minimum number of frames per process is defined by the architecture, the maximum number is defined by the amount of physical memory that's available. In between, we're still left with a significant choice of frame allocation. The easiest way to split the frames to processes where the number of frames is M, let's say, and the number of processes is N, is to give everyone an equal share, that is, M divided by N frames. I won't consider the frames needed by the operating system for the time being. For instance, if there are 93 frames in five processes, each process will get 18 frames. The three leftover frames can be used as a free frame buffer pool. This scheme is called equal allocation. An alternative is to recognize that various processes will need differing amounts of memory, obviously. Consider a system with a 1K frame size. If a small process of 10K and an interactive database of 127K are the only two processes running in the system with 62 free frames, it doesn't make much sense, does it, to give each process 31 frames. The small process does not need more than 10 frames, so the other 21 are wasted. To solve this problem, we can use proportional allocation, in which we allocate available memory to each process according to its size. In this way, both processes share the available frames according to their needs, rather than equally. In both equal and proportional allocation, of course, the allocation may vary to the multiprogramming level. If the multiprogramming level is increased, each process will lose some frames to provide the memory needed for the new processes. Conversely, if the multiprogramming level decreases, the frames that were allowed to the departing processes can be spread over the remaining processes. Notice that with equal or proportional allocation, a high priority process is treated the same as a low priority process. By definition, however, we may want to give the high priority process more memory to speed its execution to the detriment of low priority processes. 
One solution is to use a proportional allocation scheme wherein the ratio of frames depends not on the relative size of processes, but rather on the priorities of processes or on a combination of size and priority. Well, this is a good place to stop. Let's take a break, review your notes, update your study guide, and when you're ready, come on back and we will proceed.